Welcome to Vet Image Lab. In our previous videos, we talked about heart diseases like MMVD in dogs and HCM in cats. After those lectures, some of you asked me to create a separate video summarizing the normal echo values for dogs and cats. So today, we'll go over the typical reference ranges for key echocardiographic parameters like fractional shortening, ejection fraction, left ventricular diameter, and the left atrium to aortic root ratio. I'll briefly explain what each one means, and at the end, I'll show you a clear summary table with the normal reference ranges for both species. Let's get started. Fractional shortening, or FS, is the parameters to assess left ventricular systolic function. It's measured using M mode from the right parasternal short axis view, usually at the level of the papillary muscles. In dogs, the normal FS range is about 25 to 45 percent. If FS drops below 25%, that suggests systolic dysfunction. On the other hand, values over 45% may still be normal, especially in small breeds or young dogs. In cats, FS is naturally higher. The normal range is around 30 to 55%, and many healthy cats fall between 45 and 50%. It's also important to note that high FS is physiologic in cats, especially when they are awake and not sedated. Next is ejection fraction, or EF. EF tells us what percentage of the left ventricular volume is ejected with each heartbeat. It's usually calculated using the biplane Simpsons method on 2D images. In dogs, the normal EF range is about 55 to 75 percent. Smaller dogs may have slightly higher values, especially if they're excited or anxious during the scan. In cats, EF is generally higher. The typical range is around 60 to 80 percent, but it can be higher in healthy cats. Now let's talk about LVIDD and LVIDDN in dogs. LVIDD stands for the left ventricular internal diameter in diastole. This is a basic but essential measurement to evaluate the size of the left ventricle. The LVIDD value depends heavily on body size. That's why we use LVIDDN, the normalized value. It adjusts LVID based on body weight using allometric scaling with the formula LVID divided by body weight to the power of 0.294. In general, a normal LVIDDN is less than 1.7. This indexed value helps us decide whether the ventricle is truly enlarged, regardless of the dog's size. So in practice, LVIDDN is more reliable when comparing across different breeds or weight classes. Let's move on to LVIDD and LVIDDN in cats. In healthy cats, LVID usually ranges from about 1.2 to 1.9 centimeters. A typical value is around 1.5 centimeters in cats that weigh 4 to 5 kilograms. Larger breeds like Maine Coons may have slightly higher LVIDD values, but overall the normal range is fairly narrow in the feline population. That's why we don't routinely use LVIDDN in cats. Since most cats fall within a limited weight range, indexing isn't widely adopted in clinical practice. Let's take a look at the LA to AO ratio, which is one of the most important indicators of left atrial enlargement. It's measured from the right parasternal short axis view, typically at the level of the aortic root in early diastole. In dogs, the normal LA-AO ratio is about 1.0 to 1.5. If the value is 1.6 or greater, it's considered enlarged. In cats, the normal range is around 1.0 to 1.4. A value greater than 1.5 is generally considered abnormal. And for predicting congestive heart failure, studies suggest that an LA-AO over 1.6 is a strong predictor of risk. Here's a quick summary of the normal echocardiographic parameters we've reviewed. On the left, you see the typical values for dogs, and on the right, the corresponding reference ranges for cats. You can use this table as a reference in your practice. You'll also find these values posted in the comments below, so you can copy and keep them as a quick reference. Of course, always interpret them in context, along with chamber shape, wall thickness, Doppler findings, and clinical signs. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Also, if there's a specific topic or case you'd like me to cover next, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.